Oh, hey, didn't see you there. Come on, we're gonna go for a walk. Okay, so we're here in my hometown of Laguna Beach, California, uh, where I live and work. And the restaurant behind me is a restaurant that opened about 10 or 12 years ago. And when it opened, I actually applied to be a bartender there. And the reason I wanted to share this story is because this, is the, this was the first and only time that I didn't get the job. Uh, I was denied the position. And at the time, I felt like a total failure. And still to this day, 10, 12 years later, I remember the one question, the one question that the manager who asked me, he was actually the chef, the owner of the restaurant, asked me that I didn't know the answer to. Still to this day. The question was, what is a meritage? Totally stumped me. Well, the first thing I did is I went home and I Googled it, right? I researched the answer. I still remember, it's a blend of three or more wines. And as I re reflect on this story, um, you know, it really, it really brings about this theme that what happens in business when we fail or something doesn't turn out the way we wanted it to, we label ourselves as something's wrong with me or I'm a failure or I'm not cut out to doing this. And I chuckle today that I still remember the answer to that question. I said, if no one else for the rest of my life is gonna ever stump me for that question. And I think that's where we need to shift our perspective. Instead of looking at failure as this personal identity, identification of who we are, or what we're capable of or not capable of, but as the biggest opportunity ever for us to learn and grow. So I wanna to talk to you really quickly in this video about some ways that you can look at some of your past failures, failures, and look at them as opportunities to learn. So let's go for a walk. So, you know, I, I think most entrepreneurs have at least once experienced something that we would label as failure. Before we start looking at some things that, uh, sorry, it's a little loud here, so we'll go fast, but before we start looking at things that say, well, where is the lesson, right? Where is the lesson from the failure? I think it's, I think it's most important to first look at uh, why it was a failure in the first place. Why did we label it a failure? And it, chances are it didn't go out the way that you wanted it to. You had an expectation and that expectation wasn't met. And the most important thing you have to realize is that who set the expectation? You did. So in some cases, we end up setting ourselves up for failure in the first place. But only if we look at it like that, right? So one of the most important things we do after every single launch, promotion, or project is do a debrief. In fact, I tell all of my Inner Circle Mastermind and coaching clients that the magic is in the debrief. That is where you and your team take a half day at least to look at all the data, all the information, and ask the right questions. Because to me, the most frustrating thing is that when someone comes to me and says, James, I did this and it failed, and I don't know why. If you don't get to the source of the breakdown of the failure or the mismet expectation, you'll never be able to pivot, adjust, or course correct. And so we really want to take a, start taking a look at why didn't it work. And it's not always easy. But one of the things that we look to first is surveys. The number one thing you can do is just listen. So are you taking the time? I know surveys is nothing new or revolutionary. It's not like you've never heard of a survey before. But how often are we actually taking the time to just listen to our prospects and our customers and ask them, really ask them, why didn't this resonate with you? What had you say no to this? Why didn't you buy? And listen to their answers without getting defensive, without making it personal. So that's the first thing we look at. 
um, is what is our audience telling us? Sometimes it's, a, it's just a simple copy issue. Sometimes it's just that you need to change the wording or the offer just a little bit. Now the second thing that we look at before I leave you here is we look at the numbers, right? Sometimes it's just a number game. When people tell me they have a, uh, a goal for a number they want to hit, we want to do $100,000, but they only got 100 people to see their offer. Well, that's just a numbers problem. Not enough eyeballs saw your offer. Not enough people went through your funnel, your webinar, or your launch. So we're going to, we'll cross the street here. Um, so again, there's a myriad of things that could be the issue. But what it never is, is you. And that's what I want to leave you here with, is the biggest lesson and takeaway is that if there is a failure or a mismet expectation, that it's not you, that it's not now a label of, I'm not cut out for this, or I'm not enough, or I'm a failure. It's an opportunity to say, where's the lesson here? What can I learn? How can I take this experience and apply it to my next launch project or promotion? I'm James Wedmore. Thanks for listening.